Sub Lesson 9.2, Troubleshooting a Windows Service with Services.msc. Sometimes an application won't work properly, regardless of how many times you reconfigure it or shut it down and restart it. You just can't seem to get it to work properly. In other cases, the computer won't perform network operations properly due to a problem with an associated application or an issue with the service itself. In many of these scenarios, a restart of the underlying service will fix the problem. Case in point, in the last lesson, we used ipconfig slash release and ipconfig slash renew to fix the issue of a computer not being able to obtain the correct IP address automatically. And we said, okay, but what if that failed? And we mentioned well, you might want to look at the DHCP client service as another possible option to fix the problem. So let's enter the DHCP client service now. I've got the services window open here, and I'll bring up a command prompt also, and we want to work in administrator as an administrator in elevated mode. So the first thing I want to look at is my IP configuration. We'll run a quick IP config. And you'll see here we have no IP address. Well, we have an IP version 6 address, but the address I'm interested in is the IP version 4. We do not have one. There is no address to be had. So normally what you do is you'd say, okay, we could do a release and a renew or just a renew. So if we do an IP config slash renew and press enter, it tells us an error occurred, and I'll maximize this, an error occurred while renewing interface LAN. The interface is unknown. It's unknown. How is that possible? How, how did the computer forget? Well, sometimes what happens is the DHCP service fails. Let's go to our services window and scroll down here and look at the DHCP client. Notice that there's no information here because it's stopped and it says disabled. Well, that's no good. We've got to fix that. So let's double click on that guy now. We'll modify the startup type to automatic. Then we'll apply that because notice here that the buttons are grayed out. Once we apply the startup type as automatic, then we can start the service. We'll click that now. Click OK. And you can see here it says started and automatic. We're in good shape. We'll go back to the command line and we'll run another IP config and press enter. And look, that quickly, the computer got an IP address. Once you turn on that DHCP client, the computer will look out to the network for a DHCP server and grab an IP address on the network, or it will look to the registry, to the interfaces folder that we've accessed before and it'll see the old IP address that it was using. And it re-registers that IP address very quickly. Now, when this happens, regardless of whether that happened or not, you should test this. You want to try and ping at least the router. Just to be sure. You could get that old IP address rebound by the DHCP client and, you know, you never know, you might not actually be getting it from a DHCP server. But we have replies and everything is good, so we're in good shape. We've reset the DHCP client to automatic, set it to started, and we should be good with that. Now, sometimes it might be set to started and set to automatic, but for some reason it still fails. If that's the case, you can right-click it and do a restart. It'll stop the service and then start the service back up automatically, refreshing everything for you. So very important to understand how to start and stop services and how to change the startup type. Uh, we mentioned also dependencies. When you stop the DHCP client, that might also stop another uh, system, the WinHTTP web proxy, and we showed that before actually. This is dependent on the DHCP client. And it goes further than that. The DHCP client is dependent on these services in order to work properly. 
So if you have a problem with the DHCP client and it just won't restart, it's stalled and it won't work for you for whatever reason and you can't get it started, then you want to look at these guys as well because the DHCP client is dependent on them. And then ultimately, and you can imagine there's lots of services. Ultimately, everything when it comes to networking and PC connections, connections between different computers, ultimately everything is based off of two services. The server service, if we double click on that now, the server service deals with your computer, your local computer, storing and sharing and serving information to other systems. And the other one is the workstation service. The workstation service deals with your computer connecting to other computers that are storing data. And, uh, you know, if you map a network drive or if you connect when you're doing browsing, that is done through the workstation service. These two are very, very important, uh, integral to the system, the server, server service and the workstation service. So you want to always look at those as well. If you can't get a DHCP address and the DHCP client isn't working properly, you can't restart that service. You look at the services that it is dependent on. And then ultimately you look at the workstation service and make sure that that is, uh, started up because it ultimately it all depends on that because that's what allows you to look out to other systems on the network. Let's clear the screen. If I was to do the net use command, I would see the uh, mapped network drives that I've created on this system. These are the drives. They're mapped out to other computers on the network. I'm using the X drive to connect to uh, one of my main systems. The Y drive goes to my uh, home theater PC. Also, the Z drive goes there. And the command completed successfully. It's showing these mapped network drives. But if the workstation service had failed, or if it was stopped for some reason, and I'll stop it now, and we run that net use command, it'll tell you system error 1222 has occurred. The network is not present or not started, keywords. It's not started. The workstation service has been stopped. This happens sometimes. Any one of these services can, be, can stall or a virus could affect them or could, there could be some type of corruption in the system as far as the files go. For example, the workstation, uh, Service name is landmanworkstation.exe. If that, you know, executable fails, then the service won't work. And then you can't do anything. You can't, you're not going to be able to browse the web. You're not going to be able to connect to other computers on the LAN. You name it. Uh, you won't be able to do it because the network is not present. So we'll restart that guy back up. Run the net use command. And we see our maps network drives. So there's a little bit about services for you in the next sub lesson. We'll get more into the command line and how it works in conjunction with the services in the GUI.